Alright, welcome to part 2 of the video series and uh, this video is going to be all about brakes and uh, keeping your brakes cool by adding brake ducts. So this car comes with these 8 piston caliper brakes which is pretty much as big as it gets for cars really but it still overheats the brakes and that's not because the brakes aren't big enough it's just because it doesn't have enough brake ventilation. So these are the pads after just one track day and they're completely worn and that's just what happens if your brakes overheat, it causes excessive brake wear. And the reason why keeping your brakes cool for a track use is so important is because if your brakes get hot enough, you could suffer from brake fade. And um, you could go into a corner and go completely offline because of the brake fade. Or if it's significant enough, you could also end up completely off the track. Alright, now just to explain a little bit about how um, brake ducts help you keep your brake cooler. Um, so this is just a cutaway of your disc. Um, so if you cut your disc in half vertically, this is what you will see inside. Uh, there is a series of wings. Um, and what happens is when your rotor, your rotor is spinning with your wheel when you're driving your car. And basically that makes this rotor act like a turbine, which um, makes it suck air in from here and push it out from here so it basically acts like a turbine when it's spinning this way um, but the problem with that is if you think about how fast your wheels are turning so even driving at 200 kilometers per hour your rotor is only spinning at 1400 rpm which if you put that into perspective 1400 rpm really isn't that much for a turbine this size your air conditioner blower let's say that spins at 3000 rpm to um, blow the air for your air, air conditioning system and that's a much wider blower compared to your brake disc so this is not significant airflow at all uh, what brake ducts do is you basically add a duct here and this duct goes all the way to the front of the car and it sucks high speed air in from the front of the car and basically forces it into this um, gap here and all this air basically then is forced to go out of here which is a lot of airflow and that um that makes a significant difference in your cooling. So looking at it from a top view, like let's say if you cut your car horizontally now, this is what it will look like. So this is your um, tire, this is your wheel, this is your brake disc over here, and this is your brake backing plate. And um, right on the backing plate, this um, you connect this um, brake cooling duct, and it goes all the way to the front of your car. Sucks in high speed air from here, doesn't suck it in, it's just pushed into it. And uh, yeah, that high speed air comes all the way through this duct into the backing plate, and that's and the backing plate is basically it sits as close to the disc as possible, so there is no air leaking out of here. And all the air is basically forced out of the disc from here and it exits from your wheel then. And um, also, this backing plate is supposed to be slightly smaller than your original backing plate because most manufacturers, what you'll see on cars is the backing plates will go all the way to the edge of the disc and they will cover the entire disc, which is not that good because you want it, you want as much of the disc exposed as possible so that the air coming out from the side of the um, wheels is also allowed to cool the disc, which is not going to be significant, but it is still something. Now some of these backing plates, um, for some cars you might be able to find these backing plates by aftermarket manufacturers, but for my car I couldn't find it. So I'll show you what to do in the case if you can't find a backing plate for your car. It's not hard at all to make one. Okay, so the first thing we'll have to do is remove our old brake pads. And luckily that's really easy to do on this car. Now even though it has a lot of brake pads, it has four pads in one caliper. They are really easy to remove. All you have to do is just um, hammer these pins back. Once these pins come out, you can just move the pistons back a little bit and the pad just comes out. Okay, then you just push the Pistons back, I'm pushing the pad back a little, and usually it's pretty easy to do on this car. You can just do it by applying a bit of force on the pad. 
And then the pad just slides out. So once all your pads are out, the next step is to remove your brake caliper. And the brake caliper is usually held on by these two um, bolts at the back of the caliper. So you'll need to first uh, use a breaker bar to break these two bolts loose. And they're usually pretty tight, it takes a lot of effort breaking them loose. But um, once you break them loose with your breaker bar, you just use a ratchet to open them the remainder of the way. And once the two bolts are out, your caliper should just come off. Um, but have a wire or something ready to hang your caliper with, because you shouldn't leave the caliper hanging with your brake hose. It could uh, damage your brake hose. So once that's done, the next step is to remove your um, brake disc along with your brake um, uh, along with your wheel hub. Uh, because to remove the brake, uh, to, to remove the backing plate, you will need to remove the hub as well. It's better to just do um, both of them together. Uh, for my car, I have to loosen this Allen key first, and then uh, the uh, center nut comes off. But lucky for me, my one comes off really easily. Some cars will actually require a lot of torque to um, break that nut loose. So once this is off, um, your needle bearing will just um, slide out. The front needle bearing, there's two of these in there. Uh, the bigger one is at the back and uh, that's a little harder to get out. But yeah, once this is out, the next step is just to uh, take remove the three bolts that are holding your backing plate. And um, once those three bolts come out, you should just be able to remove your backing plate. Oh, and by the way, if you have a stuck um, bolt, just don't uh, try to f force it loose because it could uh, it could break in, and that's a massive hassle to then um, get the broken bolt out of there. I usually spray some penetrating fluid on it and give it a few seconds and try again. It still doesn't work. Just smack it a few times with a hammer, and that usually breaks it loose. So yeah, once these three bolts are out, you should just be able to remove your backing plate. So now what I need to figure out is um, to cut to cut the hole for the right size where this will go. And I also need to make sure that when I mount that on here, it doesn't touch any of the suspension parts out here. So I need to be careful of that. and. Once I'll cut the hole out here, hopefully I'll be able to weld this tube, if this metal isn't uh, thin enough, I'll be able to weld it on and that will work. Okay, so once your backing plates are off, you need to cut a hole in it where your um, brake duct would go and you need to weld the tube to it where you will uh, mount your hose. But the problem is that my backing plate, my backing plate is made of aluminum and I was stupid enough not to <laughs> realize that up until I actually started welding it. But no worries, all I'll have to do is I'll have to mark up the steel sheet uh, where all the holes go and oh shit I moved it. When once I've marked up all my holes I'll just make a new backing plate out of the steel sheet over here. Okay so I used an angle grinder to cut the steel sheet in the right shape and just use the drill press to drill the three holes and I'm welding this um, 3 inch by 1 16th inch thickness steel tube onto it where my silicon brake holes will mount. So once everything is done it's best to um, test fit it on the car, make sure it clears everything um, especially when you mount the caliper on and also try turning your wheels one way uh, and the other way to make sure it clears all the suspension components. Now a pretty interesting thing inside these um, Brembo calipers is that uh, they have eight pistons, but all, um, but each two of them are of different sizes. You can see that the one at the top is actually a bigger size than the one at the bottom. This is because 
uh, when your disc is spinning it tries to pull the pad one way which causes uneven wear and what the bigger piston does is it applies more force on the top than at the bottom which cancels out the wear, uh, uneven wear and causes the pad to wear evenly and yeah I've seen that really works because this is a pad from this car and if you look at the wear it's pretty even comparing that to these Brembo pads from my um, Mercedes SL which has four piston calipers and all the pistons are of equal size look at the wear on these pads you can see that it's not even it's gone to one side so yeah it's pretty cool so next I just uh, spray painted my backing plate just to protect it against rust and uh, corrosion because if you leave steel exposed it's going to get rusted pretty quickly. So this is how the backing plate would go on the disc. You want to leave as much disc on the outer edge exposed as possible so just for better cooling. And also this um, went lines up pretty well with the well you can see it's a little covered from here but that's about it the rest of it all the air is going to go right into the disc and help it cool this part is going to be covered by the caliper so that's not going to be an issue but yeah you want to make this sit as close to the disc as possible and also to make it cover all this area so like the air you're pushing in doesn't leak out of anywhere so that's really important Putting everything back is just a reverse process of how you took it off. First I put the backing plate on, next I'm going to put the um, brake disc and the hub bearing on. Uh, after that I'm going to put the caliper on and then uh, the brake pads back in and then the VLON and that's it then I'll be done. Alright so this is how the thing looks like when the whole thing is complete. Right now I'm using this temporary aluminum duct just to uh, make sure uh, the hose will clear everything, all the suspension components when the uh, tire turns one way or the other way. Um, but really I've um, ordered my silicon brake ducts, they just haven't arrived yet. So yeah, really I can't um, complete the system until they arrive, but for now I just need to work out if everything works and once they arrive it's just going to be as simple as putting them on and making the front inlets for the ducts. So that's it for part two. Didn't get an awful lot done this week but that's because the parts didn't arrive and I was a little busy with other things anyways but part three is going to be a bit more interesting. I'll show you how I make my uh, custom carbon fiber parts because the front inlets for the brake ducts are going to be made out of carbon fiber uh, here's an older video of a uh, carbon fiber manifold I made for my Mercedes SL. Um, I'm also going to be adding front spacers to the front wheels because the, on the last track day the front tires were hitting the um, one of the suspension components when I was going through the corners. So um, yeah once I get through with all these small issues then we can get to the more interesting stuff like suspension work and track testing. And later on also turbocharging and adding more power to the car. So yeah, all that is still to come. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in part 3.